Hello and welcome to the first instalment of Tinsley's Diary. First thing, obviously you can tell I'm no longer part of THC Tackle TV, I'm doing my own thing. And um, 2nd of, well, 3rd of January today, I thought I'd get out and come and do my first episode over the pit. I haven't been over here throughout the whole of winter, the last session I did was actually in October. And uh, I had a couple of fish, two commons, and I've actually got some footage of those, so uh, might as well let you watch those now. As you can see, those commons weren't massive, but nonetheless a result on a hard pit like this. And I'm not, I'm not just saying it's hard to make myself look good, it is not an easy pit to fish at all. You've got challenges everywhere, it's a big open pit, the wind last night was mad. And uh, I turned up, I think, probably about 3 o'clock, so I had limited time to get my rods out. I had a bit of a mare getting down here. As I said, there's challenges everywhere, even getting the gear to the swim. It's a bit of a dirty one, there's a massive slope. And uh, tipped the barrel like eight times where it's so wet, everything was just sliding. It was absolutely humping it down with rain, but I got everything set up. And usually I get the rods out first, but I got the bivvy up, got everything under the shelter, and then I uh, found two little positive spots out in front, which are looking good. I've seen one fish show, and that was last night, just as it got dark. That was down the other end, up in the bay, and uh, got the whole lake to myself. So, yeah, no fish last night, unfortunately, but um, yeah, it's looking good. Didn't get a great night's sleep, there's loads of dog walkers coming around and over in the field there seems to be like some infestation of rabbits so you get shooters and people walking around with guns and that, hunting, so I was a bit on my toes really but you know, yeah happy days so I'm going to get on with the fishing, uh, might, it's still early morning, it's about quarter past eight now I think so still early, still bite time, um, might get something very soon, so I'll see you in a bit. Right, I've just come down to a quiet little area of the lake. It's about half eleven now. No morning bite. I'm going to leave the rods out all day. And I'm going to stay sort of extra vigilant for the rest of the day. I'm going to drop a bit of bait in a little quiet part. Quite a little bay, as I've said. Um, there's a few snags. I've got the willow behind me, as you can see. That goes out into the water as well. So um, It's quite warm today, so I'm hoping the carp will get up into this sort of area. See about it. It's just worth having a little shot because uh, if nothing's productive on the actual main runs back in the swim, I could always try doing a bit of stalking. So yeah, get a bit of bait in. Oh, got to be careful to my slope. Spot on. Okay, it's the end of day two. Nothing's happened throughout the day. Um, pre baiting that little spot that you saw me doing earlier hasn't paid off. Nothing went down there. And there was a family of people that went down there and threw a load of bread in, so sort of disturbed it anyway, took all the seagulls out of the way mind you, got both rods out, put a fat PVA bag out, just a single PVA bag with a handful of boilies in, no freebies or anything, that whizzed off, it turned out to be a bream, got all excited, thought it might be a car, but um, if the bream are feeding, that means the rig's working perfectly, the baiting approach is alright, so I'm confident that if the carp do get down there or one passes over, pick up a bite throughout the night, both rods are set now, and uh, I'll probably do a bit more filming tomorrow, showing you the area that I'm fishing in, possibly the rigs as well. Yeah, so I'll keep you updated. If I get anything throughout the night, I'll try and film it because we've got a few decent lights with us. But, um, yeah, see you soon. Right, just as I told you that I'd have one bream, whizzed off, had another one. Um, don't usually hold up slimies for the camera, but it's positive. Fish are getting down there, and you know, if you keep out when the bream are down there, the carp come along sooner or later, so that's what I'm going to do. 
and I'm pretty sure I might get one tonight. I'm feeling confident. But yeah, for the time being, we'll get this little baby back. Smelly old thing. It's covered me in slime. And I'm going to go and have a good cry. <laughs> I'll speak to you in a bit. Okay, right, it's half four in the morning. And I've just been awoken by a bream. Unfortunately, nothing else come after those two bream I had earlier. But I'm keeping it at the spot. I clipped it up. What I've been doing is when I've been getting the bites, I know they're bream. I've just been taking taking the rod, striking it, putting it in the clip, and then bringing them in. And um, I've been going at it. I've got another bag out there, so I'm feeling confident. So I'm going to have a fag and a hot chocolate. And um, I'll leave my bream stress and try and get back to sleep. And I'll get back to you in the morning. do a swim vlog I'm going to talk to you about where I'm fishing I'm going to make it quite brief I'm just going to explain why I'm fishing to the areas that I am right so my left hand rod I've got positioned just off of as you can see there you've got a little island just there I say an island it's like a little falling down tree on a gravel bar and you've got a bar that runs all the way across over to the corner of the lake over there over in, t in front of a swim called lumpies and then it sort of drops off flattens out. Now I've got my left hand rod which is going out. I've got it positioned out with those trees there and it's going just at the base of the bar at about sort of say 50, 55 yards out maybe. Dropping off at the base of the bar you've got weed all out in front here and it sort of goes off into thick seal and then you've got a sort of deeper area where it comes back up and goes up to the bar and then drops off the other side. So I've got one position there and my mate's told me about that. Um, I've found it before but I've never fished to it and he's had a lot of success off it, he's had a few 30s off there. Um, him and his brother have completely torn it apart. Tosh Welton, you may know him, started filming with my channel and I'm going to be fishing with him for the next season so you'll probably see him in these diary blogs too. I think together they've had about six 30s out of here and most of them have been caught off that spot, believe it or not. So I've got my far line marker with those trees there and then my right hand rod. See that tree there, I've got it going in line with that and it's going at about 60 yards and uh, the bar runs diagonally off, so I'm not going over the top of the bar, giving me a bad presentation. It's going just in front of the base of the bar, so not quite in it, not quite in, in the uh, trough as such. But um, comes right out, and uh, it's like on a sort of, it's a thick silk, sort of silkweedy bottom. Oh, here we go. Oh. What are the chances of that getting a take for the camera? Right, so that's the fourth bream I've had. <laughs> that was probably the biggest, don't know how big it was. Proper dustbin lid, but um, yeah, proofs of spots clear, proofs of rigs are presented properly. And I might as well show you the rig next now it's out of the water. But um, yeah, basically, I don't know if I explained that clear enough, but that spot out there in line with that tree, it's just sort of a flat area of silkweed and silt, thick silt. So I've got a long hair rig of about nine, 10 inches on there, then a half bottom bait and half pop up close together so it's a proper critically balanced uh, bait just sits on top of everything with two bits of foam and I've just been catapulting out like ten boilies proper tight, simple, easy winter fishing not paid off yet though, so we'll see right, I'm going to show you the rig before I get it out this is what I've had those bream on, four bream now Unfortunately, very simple. Simplistic is not not even the word to describe it. It's beyond simplistic. Literally nothing there. Right. I've got a three ounce quarter pair of lead there in line. Quite a heavy lead. Usually I fish lighter over the silt, but I had a dirty cross ring coming across over the past few days, so it's been hard to get the rig out there with a bit of foam on as well. It's been drifting with the wind, so I thought I'd put a bit more weight on there to try and get it out. And then Palomar knotted on there is a quick link which is what the rig's connected to, just locks into that perfectly. Now, fish sort of shocker style, the fish picks up the rig, shakes his head, see that lead's gone, nothing there. So, uh, got no weight to shake the rig out with. So I'll detach this off the quick link, so I can show you it. Now I've got a figure of eight loop knot in the bottom end of the rig, I'll try and keep it still for you. Just there, um, sort of thinking that if the lead goes into the seal, that loop knot, if like the bottom end sticking out, hopefully 
that loop will allow the whole rig to lay flat and parallel to the bottom without sticking up. However, saying that, I'm not too sure whether that would be the case. So, because it's quite a long rig of about 10 inches, I've stripped back a section in the middle, just there, so that if um, it loops up like so, the rest of it's going to lay flat. Coated section, once again, from there downwards for about 4 inches, and then the stripped back section up by the hook, that goes to a size 6 wide gape X, called a wide gape X. Needle sharp, checked it on my nail before I cast it out every time. And that's just knotless knotted on there, probably 12 turns around, up in line with the point. And um, straight out the top. No shrink tubing, no putty, no nothing. Just literally braid, hook, bait and a bait stop, that's it. Now the most important part is the bait itself. I've got a sort of 50-50, half and half pop up there. I've got a 15mm mark on bottom bait on the bottom, then a 15mm plumb pop up on top. So, critically balance. Hook, float, lay, uh, hook lays flat on the deck, the pop up wafts up above. Uh, acts more like a freebie but a bit lighter, wax up into the gob, hopefully nails them. So I'll uh, get this back out there and I'll see you soon.